Hey, um, Dan, let's bring you in right now. What about the Lions? They were four, 44 points down in front of 27 people at Angie Stadium in Sydney against the Giants. Now, I've got footage here of you dressing as a clown after they schooled your blues, the Lions. Um, what right. did you make of that win? Great weekend. Obviously, the Brisbane Lions came from absolutely nowhere to win a game against the Giants, which everyone kind of ripped them off. And it was wild to see them come back from 44 points down. It was just uh, one of the games that you won't forget in a long time. And with Port, we're, we're telling people about Dan. Port, you know, everything we should be talking about is to do with the Carl, stuff that happened Carl. off the field. All good, Carl. It's just my cat. Say, <laughs> it's say all good. Carl. Yep, all good. Did yeah, like no, Harry Potter. Carl, uh, sorry, Carl. All good here. Hey, I've got to go, boys. Uh, more clown antics yeah. from you. Uh, thank you, Dan. Check out your Instagram page. Take care. Hey, I wake up with today. <laughs> Slogan. good. What are you doing? Well, you said get here at 7 o'clock for the Today Show. I thought I was going to be on. No. Me, Today Show. Why would you come on the Today Show? Well, why would I need to come in for 7? To see how we do it. <laughs> so maybe sometimes I can pass you the reins if you ever get to that point of being on the Today Show. They said we want to talk to Dan. We don't say we speak to Ollie. There wasn't a big Hogwarts thing they want to talk about. You know what I find really funny? Mm. The fact that I have been on the morning show, but you get the Today Show. and then Which I get one's better? The Today Show. And I get the mid-morning 11.30 slot. Oh, no one's watching then. Yeah, that's bad. What are you doing? The uh, APL coverage. No, nah, footy. Oh, well? Yeah. What was this? Uh, I was talking about my TV show. See, people forget you're from the streets. You've been yeah. around, man. You've done some stuff. I've had a life before DDF. You have, yeah. Not a great one, but I've had a life. Look at you now. Uh, let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome to the Dan Does Footy Podcast. You can find more of Dan Does Footy on the website, Spotify, YouTube, and social media. Lids off. See ya. There was heaps of sick kids, and I was like, where are they? Kick them harder. Kick them all harder. Punch him in the face. I'm not a bloody horizontally charged, if you get what I mean. Oh, no. Oh, tough crowd today. <laughs> Should we say this is the line? If you don't hear the next bit, it's over the line. Okay, so if you don't hear the next bit, I've got a line. Who's just walked past Pun Road? He dips in. Hey, what a weekend of football. So much just stuff we need to unpack. A lot of shit went down in both games. But as we do before we get into anything, we just check in with each other because it's been the weekend. It's come and gone. Jeez, it goes quickly. You've had a hell of a weekend, my friend Ollie. Mm. How are you feeling? How's that headache? Mm. You hungover? Uh, I think it was probably worse mm. last week, especially mm. when I came in and you said, by the way, it's Mad Monday, dress up as Harry Potter. <laughs> Like, it's been a big week. That is... Any my, beers left in Melbourne or not? Oh, I think there was like a, maybe two or three. Yeah. But just bottle the battle stuff. It. Yeah. Bottle yeah. the tank. Yeah, I love that. Um, run us through your weekend because I want to get to one thing that I'm sure you don't want to talk about. Mm, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get to that. I uh, went to Luna Park yesterday. Wild. But I look, that was such a rogue Sunday thing to do. But I mm. had so much fun. What'd you go on? This the uh, big um, pirate ship? Dodgem cars. Love Started that. with the Dodgems. Then just line up a few kids. Because when I'm in there, you know what? I see some kids, I see some loose necks, and I just go ram it. Yeah. You know? But especially when there was a kids' party and there was that yeah. one little bossy pants oh. going, right, and then we're going to go on the car. And I went, yeah. I'm lining you up. Remember the Dodgem cars back in the day, how frustrated you get at the show? And oh. there'd be some, like, someone's dad just ramming people and you'd, like, lose control of the wheel. Your neck yeah. would break <laughs> in all these directions. So much fun. Just no, can't. We should have had one of the oh, next grand final party. We're going to have Dodger cars there. I love that. <laughs> I love that a lot. Okay, so you've been to Luna Park. That was Recovery Sunday. Yep, Luna Park Recovery Sunday, uh, which checks out to me. Um, on Friday night at the old birthday party in Collingwood. Yes. So Luli's Tavern, bit of a honky tonk situation. Had the ca cowboy boots on. Actually, I haven't taken them off uh, all weekend. Yeah, look good. Um, and then Saturday went to London Tavern for the Brisbane game. This is what I want to talk about. Go on then. Run us through. You saw. Now we don't know which one it was, but you saw. You saw one of the King brothers, <laughs> and your eyes lit up, and you tried to be a cool guy in front of your friends, didn't you, Mister Cool Ollie Gill? Yeah, I've got like fifteen thousand Instagram followers. He'll definitely know me. You don't even know which one it was, oh, mate. Tell us. I've had some this footy season, some embarrassing moments. This, Is this the, mo the, the most awkward situation you've been in? By far, takes the cake. By far, go. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you're with your friends here. Yeah, well, in particular, <laughs> my cousin who flew down um, from Newcastle f to surprise me. Mm. And he's a big Saints fan. 
And uh, poor bloke. It was the first time I've been around him since this has started. So it was yeah. quite funny all weekend. You know, it wasn't a lot, but maybe maybe fifteen times across a the lot weekend. Of, a lot of just be prepared. We walk down the street. Yeah, people might know me. Yeah, so this, this might be a shock for you. Might happen. <laughs> At the we were it's right in the thick of it, watching the last quarter at the tavern, and a guy comes up to me and buys me a beer. Like that's sort of where we're at, and I'm going, yeah. "This is my new life, Milan. I don't, I don't know what to tell you, mate. You know, like told you, this is it." And he goes, "All right, fair enough. That, that is pretty cool." <laughs> Game ends, and I slap him on the shoulder and I go, "Oh, Max King." <laughs> So Max King or slash Ben King. You don't know which one it was. I've got no idea. Walks through. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Now this is really where you become the coolest guy in the world. Because I went, I literally said, watch this. Oh. I'll introduce you. <laughs> I see him looking in my direction. I go, hey, mate. See that he saw, he saw me and then darted his eyes away. And my hand slowly came down <laughs> to form a thumbs up, but a thumbs up just back by, in the pocket by my leg. So I just was sort of standing there with a thumbs up next to my knee. What's the distance we're talking? Six meters, five, six oh, meters. So enough for you to clearly see a hand. Oh up. yeah. And then he saw the guys behind me and went, "Oh yeah, cool, my mates are here." So I walked straight past me, and my <laughs> thumb is still up. Oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just so awkward. It was the worst. So I could imagine you being like that Jack Ginevan photo you posted, just be there like awkwardly like, <laughs> yeah. what is happening? But not deliberate. <laughs> Did it rattle you? It rattled me so much because then I thought, oh, my God, was it was But you it, don't know which was one it was. Ben? Was it Max? Then I thought, well, if it is Max, then, well, that feels a shame because yeah. he would know who I am through the Saints and – you know, we need to get to the bottom of it. Which one it was? I'm hoping it was Ben because if it's Ben, then we, you know, he might not know me at all. So you know, that's the. I'm just thinking Ben had his BNF on the weekend up there. So would he have darted back down to Melbourne that quickly? Probably Max is not. more local. If it's Max, it's very awkward leading into the best and fairest. You have to say <sighs> something as MC. I think I will. Because say Max, we didn't get this last time in London, but hello, I am here. <laughs> it is me. Real, um, real. Down to earth type stuff that. Yeah. We're all crushing down to reality. Humbled in front of everyone. It happens to the best. I mean, it's never happened to me, but yeah, I'm does, sure it happens. Does it happen? No, nah, it doesn't. It That's really bad. bad. Yeah. So a lot of highs and that big low of you thinking you're that guy and not being the guy at all. No, I wasn't. Disaster. I redemption. We'll get redemption. You'll have to. Maybe. You'll have to. Um, well, yeah, you and I had different weekends. I wasn't a pub at all. I was a baby bunting. Yeah, talk me through that. No, I thought it was baby bunnings. A lot sure. of geez, I'll tell you what I did learn. A lot of people out there who have had babies, which <laughs> is obvious, but just like a lot more than I assumed. Oh, that caught you off guard, did it? Yeah. Like a okay. lot of feedback coming through, like, hey, baby bunnings, it'll you have to remortgage the house to go shopping there. Yeah, that's true. So our first time going to like a baby shop to yep. get sorted. We've got Anna has a spreadsheet. She, she's so organized, but this is my first time really getting familiar with what we need. Mm -hmm. You walk into this place and it is just confronting from the start and their eyes the lovely lady she was so nice at baby bunnings just she saw us first time parents walk in and went here we go absolute fresh meat this is it where's the credit card yeah and i just hand over there is the, mate a new world because it Different. is also a little bit of like oh no you oh what you weren't thinking about buying yeah, oh the... you're getting the the, the second version oh, of that stroller no. there's a new version oh you're bad parents you shouldn't do that what are you saying yeah. that you don't have a um teaspoon that also is a thermometer but then is a nightlight you absolutely yeah. need that oh you're not going to get bamboo uh yeah. a, you're not getting bamboo seats so your baby won't be able to breathe better okay Irresponsible. Yeah. It's almost like they sound an alarm. Yeah, okay. Right. This guy's okay. irresponsible. He's only spending $1,000 on a seat. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll get the, the top of the line one. Relax. Everyone calm down. Just a whole new world. Crazy. Left there. I literally have no money left. <laughs> that was a whole a whole experience. That was my whole weekend. Just trying to recover from that. And how much of a dent did you put into that spreadsheet? <laughs> literally three things on a list of 40. Yeah. So can't wait. Can't wait. If anyone wants to give, uh, give more advice, give us some things that we need to get. Everyone yeah. said you need to get the upper baby Vista. Okay. Is V2 that or V3. That's a stroller. V2 or 3. Yeah. They're like cars, mate. It's wild. The whole baby world is a new world to me. It's all happening there. But <laughs> and apart from that, you know, I've had that weekend. Then I go and check my fantasy this morning. Everyone's obsessed with the fantasy at the moment. The NFL fantasy team. Mm -hmm. Getting absolutely cooked. Yeah. Second week in a row. Fantasy team's getting cooked. It's unreal. Christian McCaffrey, get out there. 
<laughs> really letting me down. Well, I don't know why I went with whole San Fran's offense in front of my fantasy. Just a horrible decision all around. I'm zero and two. I've scored 60 points. I hate fantasy so much. I'm over it. Have you got anyone left to play? I don't care, mate. Everyone's on the trade, low trade block for me. I'm dropping really? everyone. Yeah, everyone's. No, no one is safe mm. on my team. I'm like Richmond's list right now. I, if you're a player, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you're on. You will get chopped. You're on. Yeah. How's yours going? Probably amazing. Yeah, not bad. 113 at time of recording. Two players yet to play for me. Great. So you're having a good time, aren't you? Yeah, loving it. NFL's great. A lot of people are saying they don't really care for the NFL stuff. If you haven't, you know, watch NFL if you aren't getting into it. I advise getting into it. It does take a while to get into to learn the rules, but how good is it? We I love, love it. it. We I love, love it. it. I remember someone described it when I was getting into it, and I went, "Ah, oh, yep, I get it now." Um, it's violent chess, and it that's is. the best way to yeah, it is. describe it. You know, it's it's mm. two players. You know, the the, the play callers. Yeah, gone it's, head to it's head. like chess. It's so good. It's, it's so good. Hey, anything happened in the EPL we need to know about? Oh, big one overnight. Um, Arsenal beat Tottenham in the North London derby, 1 0. That was huge. Kane was saying they were wearing some sick kit. What were they wearing? Yeah, it's uh, a nice little. So it was actually the first time in, I can't remember how many years that they've had to wear a away kit for that fixture because we've got too much white now Ooh. in our home kit. The gold? Um, no. It's not the gold? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Is that, but that, thanks for trying. Yeah. Well, what were they wearing? What was it? Just a oh, white, it was just like red. a really sexy black and then oh, sort of stealth. green red on the sides. Yeah, Love it was that. nice. All right, we'll have to go up a little bit. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, the USV was in the sphere. I don't know if you saw any of that. Say that again. The UFC in the sphere. Oh, no. Unreal. So in Vegas, that sphere there, they put oh, a UFC fight yeah. in there. Now, good spectacle. I think the stuff on socials, it was great to see that come through and see how it all worked. The mm-hmm. optics of the stuff literally coming towards you in that expensive build. If you're there watching a fight, don't know about it. Okay. Like there were some people, it seemed like they were on the roof of the Venetian, of a different hotel, looking sure. down on the ring. Like, horrible being there in, I could imagine, in person, yeah. but on the TV or in socials, unreal. Yeah, Loved it. We're okay. gonna get there. Oh, how fun would that be? I dare the AFL to go to Vegas. Yeah. Because we will burn through that place on a research trip, <laughs> <laughs> seeing what they do there. It'll be real Dr. Yeah. Evil. I'm Lots just researching of... these day pool parties. I'm wondering what they're like. Why are all the players here? I'm just researching. <laughs> yeah, we're in a strip joint right now. We're just doing some research. Is Ollie eating wings here? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Is it Bola Rosé? Yeah, we're doing oh, some research. There wouldn't That's be, a complete tax write-off. There wouldn't be one hard rock that wasn't touched by me. No, I no. Be. I'd probably have a hard rock, if you know what I mean. I've got a wife and kids. That's can't be saying that. So that'll probably stay in, won't it? That's good. Um, <laughs> I do have a question that's come through a lot to us. Yeah. I have two questions, actually. Sure. Not related at all. The first one that I've seen coming through a lot through our socials and our channels are, is it okay to change teams when you're an adult? Mm. A lot of people have questioned where they're at. With their team. A lot of people who are Eston fans have been asking that a lot. A lot of people who are North fans and Richmond fans have just posed the question, when you're an adult, is it okay to jump off your bandwagon and find a new bandwagon? Has it, so this has come around because of the whole bandwagon I talk? I think so, think? yeah. So a, a lot, lot of people like- jumping off saying it's okay to jump off when finals are on because your team's completely dead in the water. Yeah. But people are now saying, well, actually, now I've jumped off it for the finals – I might like this as a full-time position. Oh. Are we saying that's okay or not? I reckon it's okay <laughs> if you've not, if you don't really have a connection. So, you know, if you just don't, some people just don't like footy. I don't get it. Don't understand that. But everyone sort of picks the team as a kid. You know, you might go, oh, I'm going to be a Richmond fan because the canteen lady said they'll give me an extra mm. hash brand if, I'm a, yeah. rich, if I become a Richmond fan. Yeah. But then if you've never been to a game. Yeah. And then for some reason as an adult, you discover a love for another type. Yeah. Totally fine. But that would be the only scenario in my head. I mean, you'd have to lead with the – if someone asks you in Melbourne, especially around Australia, it doesn't matter where you are, but if someone says, who do you go for, I think you have to acknowledge that you've changed. So, hey, I I was a Carlton person, but now I go for. That's not a bad little rule, actually. That's how you have to do it. You can't say, oh, I'm now a Port Adelaide fan. Because I think we can all agree if you do do it, you're getting shamed. If I, if, so, if I met someone and said, oh, I'm a St Kilda fan, but I now go for the Giants, I'd go, okay, well, that's I, I don't trust you a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you make me nervous. So I reckon what we're saying is you can do it, but there are probably rules around that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, that's, that was my first one. So we're saying okay. it's okay. Okay, because Anna has – she's changed teams. She well, saw the, the, the three flags at Richmond and now she's off it. But that's the other thing. I think that makes sense as well. Like uh, if you're a partner of a player – 
Yeah, true. And I have that connection. Yep. And then you're, you've then you know yeah. gone inside the four walls and the, you know the people and. Well, all her thing that. is, I'm so connected to the stuff that you do with Carlton that I yeah. really just want to follow that with you. Hundred percent. So that's I kind of get that one, even though yeah. we've had a few arguments about that. It's a different story. Anyway, um, and the next one was, and which I hate that we're doing this, but I just I have to get my head around it, and I yep. think now that this is everyone's favorite Harry Potter podcast with a sprinkle of football, I may as well lean into this new life. Which players would belong to which house? I saw you do this and then people are asking me on my socials and I'm saying, hey, I haven't seen anything about Harry Potter. I don't even know what a Dumbledore is. But you do. <laughs> what is a Dumbledore? Here's the thing, Dan, you do know. Griffin House. <laughs> I think the best you said was Grondor. <laughs> Slytherin. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I think- um, A Hufflefish. Uh, yeah, good. I think I'm going to genuinely spend a little bit of time on this. And do a proper series. Okay. Well, sorry. Can I just say, if I was, if someone said to me, go mm-hmm. to um, Hogwarts mm-hmm. and you have to meet like, you know, all the, the wizards and that, and they're all trying yep. to, you know, learn how to cast spells. Sure. And I'm just me. Yeah. I'd just, I'd beat everyone up. <laughs> you know, like you've got a little spell, what, Wingardium Leviosa, you know, mate, I'd just like, I'd be, it'd be a no contest for me. It is frustrating when I think like through the series, there's only one punch. There's only one punch. more punches in that series. I reckon what we do is, you and I watch a Harry Potter, yeah, and we like we vlog my experience through. Hundred percent. That's all the people all are them. asking for. And then while that's happening, you'll get a better understanding of the personality types within each house. Yeah, and then we can sort of start to really dissect which players would then. Okay, do it quickly. So I, I, I think what we've talked about is a Griffin House is <laughs> it's a Patrick Cripps or like a Lockie Neal. Uh, yeah, I, I think Lockie Neal is the perfect example of a Gryffindor. Okay, in uh, my head. a Huffle Fuffle is a. Someone who's cool and smokes weed. Well, I mean, <laughs> like a Willy Rioli, would that be that player? To be fair, for a kids franchise, that wasn't the the mo. Oh, okay. But you know, that's the vibe. The so Huffle Puffles are cool. You know, there's a lot of love with a Huffle Puff. They're very okay. loyal. They're relaxed. They're, you know, that kind of vibe. So they're cool and loyal. Yeah. So I would have thought like a Liberatore. Okay. Is that kind of vibe? A Slytherin's your bad boy. He's your bad boy, but it doesn't mean evil. But you know, they can be a bit antagonising. They're cunning. That kind of thing. Christian Petrarca. Uh, um, no, I reckon he's a little. Worried about their brand. I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what I'm that's getting. True. No, I think. Um, I mean, the perfect example, like wealthy. Wealthy or Mac wealthy. wealthy. He looks like a Slytherin, though. Yeah, but you know that. Yeah. Okay. You know that kind of like, ma- gu- yeah, maybe a guinea. And then you've got the other house. What's the other one? Ravenclaw. I think the perfect example is Jacob Weedering. Well, oh, like a. He looks like a prefect of Ravenclaw. Oh, so they're like private school boys. Yeah, but their Ravenclaws are very intelligent. Um, they're tick. Okay, next. Um, they're very. Oh, yeah, I'd say they're intelligent. They <laughs> can't get over you thinking that that's what you know. But okay. Um, yeah. Let's okay. Go, let's go with that. All right. Cool. All right. Maybe we'll look, do something in social to see who it is. We'll see. It is. Yeah. We'll, we'll do something in social to see like what people think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still be leaning to that. Hey, there is a heap happening around the league that we need to talk about. On Friday the thirteenth, Richmond fans around the country fell to their knees. Yep. This news broke. Dusty Martin potentially lacing up his boots in a red and yellow Guernsey on the Gold Coast next year. Let's all try and act shocked. <laughs> Been telling you for months. This might be the first episode. I was something I read with. I led with. A comic called Stan's Desk. Yeah. Remember six months ago? Can I just ask, how relieved were you when you saw that? Because it's like, it doesn't matter if it doesn't happen now. The fact that there's at least been one like, well, they've met up and it's, it's you know, all we've the, had. the ball's rolling. It's like, oh, thank God. It's all we've had because we've had some misses. I feel like our journal, like an AFL journal, like we just throw some shit at the wall. Yeah. And most of it doesn't stick. But the one that like Sam McClure is the happiest man in the world right now This broke. Even that, as you said, that it's a story and it's a thing. He'd be like, hey, been telling you. Yeah. Have I said it for five years? Yeah, yeah I yeah. have. But at least now we're here to a point where it could be true. Yep. Just wild scenes. I, I mean, what? We're not shocked. I think this was always on the cards. There was murmurs going around it, but mm-hmm. the fact that he retired literally two months ago took us on a farewell tour, a, a lap around the Loud House, saying goodbye, crying, saying goodbye to the crowd, went under the, the, the race there, then hugged. I mean, when he did hug the Gold Coast guy <laughs> under the tunnel, I thought, okay, something's up here. You've got us here. But then something happens at Richmond. I'm not sure what it is where they, they're at Richmond as a coach or a player, then they lose their passion, and then they'd find it up on the Gold Coast. Yeah. It's really weird when they went and chased Dimmer in Europe. He was literally in Europe having calamari and rosé and was like, you know what? 
I am hungry for football again. I, maybe I've my passion again. Yeah. So something must happen up there. So he's up there at the moment. I think we saw him on the weekend up there on the Gold Coast having some chats with Dimard. The news broke. This is the uh, this is what broke in the article here. Dustin Martin has met Gold Coast coach Damien Harbick in the postseason, intensifying speculation. One of the game's greats is set to join the Suns for the 2025 season. The cost for the Suns would be a list spot and Martin's wage, estimated to be 500 to 700,000, and the Tigers would receive nothing. Martin, 33, played his final game for the Tigers on August 3rd and announced his retirement two days later. It is believed Martin has spent recent weeks weighing up whether he has the motivation to continue playing. It is also believed Martin has dropped several kilograms in weight in preparation for preseason training. The AFL would welcome the three-time Norm Smith medalist to Suns, but Martin would likely miss out on any AFL ambassador money. Despite his national profile and popularity with kids, it is believed the AFL would be reluctant to pay Martin a Gary Ablett-type salary to promote the game in Queensland. An ambassadorial package would require Martin to be available to all media, er, not happening, to help promote the game and be open to various school and promotional visits, definitely not happening. His refusal to speak to AFL media for the past decade would count against Martin if he was to pursue an ambassador role. Just definitely not going to be an ambassador. I mean, I didn't, no way. I didn't know that this was still a thing, to be fair. So it happened with Gaz. So Gaz yeah. was paid his salary for the Suns. Yeah. And I think the AFL paid another million dollars on top of his salary to be an ambassador for Queensland and Gold Coast Suns football up there. So, and then Carmichael Hunt was the same. So Carmichael's contract was maybe 300, 400,000, but the AFL then tipped in rumoured allegedly another million so he was on 1.4 mm. to just try at football yeah okay so the AFL is saying here that this is going to happen the game's set up here the foundations the roots are in the ground here we don't need Dusty going to school visits we don't need him doing any of that I feel all. like he'd do that though would he, he would yeah I feel like he'd do those sorts of things I think the media is a complete write off I don't think Dusty wants Barb at, at all from what, from what his history tells us, he's not a guy to go and do this stuff. He doesn't want cameras. Because if he goes to a school, there's going to be a camera there. He doesn't want any of that. Mm, sure. He doesn't want to speak to any media. So as I said, put us through the, the retirement tour. I think what he really wanted to do, and the big thing that was coming through loud to us before the season started, was that he wanted to be a 300-game player for Richmond. Mm -hmm. That's all he wanted to do. And then after that happened, we can all – he checked out. Like let's, let's call it as mm. it is. We love him. He's one of the absolute goats. He's my goat. But he completely checked out. He was done. So now he's going to go up to the Suns, maybe, and play for them. If you're a Richmond fan, you just hurt. You're not disappointed, just hurt. I think it would hurt that now they receive nothing. I think that would hurt because you'd still get something for him. I think like that, yeah, you, that and the fact that he says, oh, I found my passion again up there. Well, why wasn't your passion here for us? Yeah. You know, you bleed black and yellow. And now you found passion up there in red and yellow. Yeah. I don't know about that. I don't think the move though, for me... The move won't rocket them into finals contention. Do yeah, are they a dusty away from finals? No, nah, it won't move the needle at all on that. Nah. I don't think it's gonna it's gonna put them in that next category where they play finals. But it is a move that will put bums on seats and number four Guernseys on backs up there mm. for sure. There's a marketing dream. Their li their lips will be licked all over the shop. Yeah, because they could market this thing to literally all of Queensland. Mm. And you'd watch it as a neutral fan, a football person, your eyeballs would be on Gold Coast games, mm. and they've been. Dying for this. Yeah, it's a bit like as a like a you know, my relationship with the NRL. Mm. I could name two players. Yeah. So if you're an NRL fan, you you're probably in that same boat. And Dusty would be one of those names. It's just like it, every club now has money to spend with the CBA. We've seen that with Mac Andrews here, which we'll speak out later, but for an irrelevant football club to then go and spend that money, it's actually a smart investment mm. just to get eyeballs and ears back on them. Hundred percent. They need it. So People are saying it's 500k to 700k. We've come out now and we've found out it's actually more like 300k, 300k a year to play up there. And I'd say he'd play 15 games max. There's no way Dusty's traveling with a team that much. He'd even so like he's go a on home, the, home game contract guy. Oh, if he doesn't want to go to Marvel, there's no way he's getting on a flight to come play in Melbourne or to Perth. It's true. I reckon it'll be a 300k contract and you play home games and just park yourself in a golf square that's, and compliment Ben King. Dan, that's the best deal I've ever heard. 100%. Isn't that – that's the dream. He's already got paid money. He can just be on the Gold Coast, get a nice tan, run around there. There's Cavill Avenue. He'll love that, you know. That's the best deal I've ever heard. I think they're going to rebrand the kittens up there for sure because yeah. they know it's a good thing for business. Mm. Get a kittens up there for sure. I, when we saw that, you know, someone fell at their knees <clears throat> when this news broke, I was in kittens and I saw everyone fall at their knees. Yeah. I was like, oh, that must mean Dusty just said he's going to the Gold Coast. That's what that's meant. I know that. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing in kittens but – But you were there. Just hanging and, out, yeah. having a good time. So watch this space on that. That'd be, it'd be crazy to see someone who's been such a legend footy club just go and like go to the Suns. 
It's like a random team. It is so random. Imagine if he plays against Richmond. I think that's also probably in his contract. I'm not going to do that. There's, well, there's no, there's no, there's nothing bad happens from this move for him. He gets paid. It's not like people to go, oh, Dusty Martin, your career is now less significant. No, totally. You can only enhance it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be hard. It's like when Jordan went to the Wizards. Everyone's like, oh, don't do that. And then he did it. And it's like, okay, you really should have done that. That's the only thing I can see would be like, this is now not great yeah. for them. Um, so watch this. Yeah, watch this based on that. And we know that the Suns, they're in a mood for spending cash because they just sign Mac Daddy for $12 million over nine years, making him the highest paid player in AFL history. Get that bag, Mac Andrew. Well done, Mac. Getting paid a shitload of money. 20 years old and now is a rich, rich young man. As we always say here, it's, this is a league that pays you on potential and not what you've done. And his potential is up there with Harley Reid. Mm -hmm. He can turn a game. It's just a wild, wild contract for a guy that's played. It was 20 years old and played a handful of games. Mm -hmm. Crazy. I think, it's, again, another smart signing here by the, by the Suns. Added in some protection for themselves. So they literally, they only signed him to a six-year deal with a trigger for him to extend for another four if he obviously, you know, hits those triggers. Yep. And then they've also added in protection for themselves against injury. So if he has a career-ending injury or something goes pear-shaped with his body, which hopefully it doesn't because he loves Mac Andrew, then they're also protected and they have to see out the rest of that contract. But just so much money. And they had to move on this. As soon as a rival club put eight years, $12 million mm -hmm. in front of him, I think it was Hawthorne and St Kilda, the Suns just had to act quickly. Mm -hmm. And they've done that here. So absolutely huge by the Suns locking away their future. It's so exciting because it also reminds me of like not too long ago in the NFL when Kirk Cousins signed the first fully guaranteed contract for mm. a quarterback and it then paved the way, changed the game completely yep. and then now we're seeing Slow players balls. in all different positions getting paid stupid amounts of money. So now – Precedent's been set. It's going to happen. In I a think big way. you're dead right. The new CBA, as we've spoken about, literally there's going to be another, probably before the end of the season or, or just after into the new year, another 10, 15, 20 contracts are yeah. like this, just because every club has more money to spend and they have to spend it. Yeah. You have to hit your salary cap. You can't just reserve money. Like you have to spend this money and you have to spend it somewhere. So the Suns doing this is a great play. I loved every bit of it. Mm. Now, he might not live up to it, but it's a, it's a move you had to make if you're the Gold Coast Suns. Mm. Harley Reid would be licking his lips. <sighs> Because if Mac Andrew, and he's a great player, and as we said, you get paid on potential, he's getting paid 12 over nine, Harley Reid is going to get paid 20. He'll be a first $2 million player. He'd be, he'd be sitting in the West Coast, or he's back home on his farm going, unreal. I'm so happy about this. And West Coast have come out during the week and said, we will do anything and pay him anything to keep him. So now it's up to Harley if he wants to be paid the literally the highest amount of money in AFL history at West Coast and wants to see that thing out, given they don't even have a coach yet. Mm. Justin Langer, it doesn't even want the job. Does he want to do that there or does he want to try and get the same money which he'll get anywhere at a St Kilda? They have a mm -hmm. war chest. That thing is jangling around. Does he go back to Melbourne? Does he go, where is he going to go? Like so much for Harley to play out, so many decisions for him and, and he's going to get paid a shitload of money. He'll be looking for a bigger bank account right now. He owes Mac the biggest thank you of all time. Oh, he does. Paved the way, Mac Andrew. Yeah. So it's just, I th again, we're going to see so many pay. I think all the, the players from their third, fourth years now, they're going to get paid a lot of money. Tazzy coming into the league. Everyone's going to get paid and it's great <sighs> to see. Can you imagine Tazzy, what sort of offers they're going to be throwing yeah. about? They've got a $10 million sign-on bonus to spend as well. So if you're a, a Harley, you're going to get your $2 million contract and they could say, <laughs> hey, do you, want another, do you want another $5 million? We'll spend half our sign-on bonuses on you. <sighs> I mean, it's a lot of money. I love it. I love it. I just want to get to the point where everyone's driving a Lambo. I want Mr. Lambo, Zach Merritt. I want like 40 Mr. Lambos. Didn't we have that conversation where I remember, because growing up in Tassie, I don't just see footy players. No. Like it never happens. Mm. I assumed that was the case. You see them everywhere? No. Oh, you drive a like, Lambo? Yeah, I thought that they were trillionaires. Yeah. No, no, we're not. And then when I got caught at the lights and saw Dan Butler and Callum Wilkie car pull into a game in a Subaru Forester, I went... Thought maybe not. Oh. No, no, yeah, not everyone's millionaires. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Wild. So one of those boys, everyone's getting paid. We love that. Some lists are starting to take shape for next season. Freeman or delisted Matt Tabernard off a rookie list. Had a great career. Matt Tabernard, back in the day, we had a few years there where he was up and running and he got really... He was oh, pretty much their spearhead for a long time there. Um, so they're going to go into next season without him. Carlton cut Jack Martin, Caleb Marchbank and David Cunningham from their list. Jack Martin, the big name here, on a lot of money. Mm. Spent a lot of money to get him to the Blues from the Suns. Uh, I think it was 2019. They offered him, a th at one point, it was a million dollars a year, his contract. 
contract, which is just wild. Only played the 54 games in his five years at Blues, and rumours are that he's done a medical with Freo as well, or could potentially return to a Queensland team. I don't know if that's Brisbane or the Suns, but he might be one that you take a risk on. Hammy's made a paper mache, but you might you might take a risk on him. He'd get picked up. You can't tell me that he'll be left doing nothing. Well, he's asked he asked the Blues to delist him to make an easier transition yeah, okay. from him to go from Blues to another list. So I think you'd take a He'll go somewhere. Yeah. He'll go somewhere. Poor bloke's body just hasn't got going. So they did that. I mean, the Suns, um, the Blues made a, a risk here in getting him over from the Suns. Mm. Obviously thought that he'd live up to some more potential. Touted as the next big thing up at the Suns when he came into the system. And just his body's let him down massively. Well, that's the scary thing with these contracts, right? So if he was rumoured to be offered a $1 million job. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Kane Corn's rolling around talking about big contracts and now clubs sign him. He's going to be proven so right. Yeah. You know, but like we've seen it already. There's been contracts out there that players have signed that are 10, you know, six to 10 years on big money and their bodies let them down and the clubs are stuck in that situation. Mm. But I think that's going to be a norm now because clubs with the new CBA, as we said, and Tazzy coming in, you have to lock in your good talent regardless of the risk on it yeah. and pay them on potential. Well, that's the thing. The world will change. It will change. The, the landscape will just be different. And statistically, not everyone's going to end up being a superstar. No, no, definitely not. And I think what we're seeing here now, what we've heard last night when this broke, is that St Kilda are one of the clubs that have an absolute war chest and they've got the the hand in there and just jingling it around. Just warming it up, letting people know, hey, this is still here. In case you can't, you don't remember that we've got this because yeah. we've been a little bit down the bottom of the ladder, chopsticks in the eye scenario all year. This is what we've got here. Let's just warm up the war chest. News last night, St Kilda preparing a monster contract to dangle in front of Zach Merritt. Now, this will just not happen. What Zach Merritt isn't taking a backward step to be paid a lot more money. He's on less than a mil, apparently, but there's no way he's going to go, oh, actually, you know what? I want to go to St Kilda. I don't want to score. You reckon that's a backward step? Him going to St Kilda. Is a backward step? It's, it's not going to happen. Think it's not going to happen, but I tell you what it is, and I love it from the Saints, it's a warning to the rest of the league that there is literally no player on any list that we're not going after. Mm. And it's, 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 a, it's, a sh it's a PR move from them saying, listen here, you know we've got this. If we're going to Zach Merritt, a captain of a footy club who's already on good money, We've got way more money to spend. So anyone that is on your list, look out. We're going for them. I loved it. I love that. I love that from you. But mm. I think that it's. I think you probably need to put a little bit more respect on St Kilda's name. I don't think it's just a PR move. You think they would want Zach Merritt? Of course. I reckon it's a PR move. But how Zach Merritt isn't changing. He's not going to make you help play. He's not going to help you play finals next year. Of course he would. No. How could he not? Because he's not what you need. You've got mids. You've got a handful of mids. You've got a great mids. I think you need to work out how to score. Yeah, I'll give so you that. that. I'll give you that. You need to work out how to get Max King healthy. Yeah. Spend it in your strength and conditioning. Yep. He could learn how to do a high five too. Yeah. You got to, you got to, your back line's okay, but you've got other issues to feel than a Zach Merritt coming to the club. I think that it would be a backward step for him. For Zach Merritt? Yeah, I think we're closer to finals than Essendon. I mean, you did say you're going to finish top four next year. Yeah, well, exactly. You're gonna, the and people in the YouTube that. comments are going to absolutely burn this place to the ground hearing that. That St Kilda are closer to... Oh, actually, I don't hate it now. I think about Essendon. Mate, I'm not getting involved. Mate, we lost two more games than you <laughs> this season. So we played finals. Told you. Um, to tell you who they will go after, which maybe they, they've done this because he said no. LDU mm. has been the big one on the cards all year. He just won the Kangas Best and Ferris, so his value went through the roof. Yeah. But St Kilda can cover that. Their best and fairest is pretty wild. Cheese will came third. I thought he had a better year than that. Yeah, that was a surprise. Why better the year? I thought he was, yeah. I don't know. Tristan Jerry came second. Paul Curtis fourth and Tom Power came fifth. So I thought Sheezel was a bit. I mean, Cherry was really, really good. good. He was really good. Really good. Uh, before we get into the review of the game, this just broke news breaking here. Bruce McAvaney joined 7 AFL broadcast in key hosting him off the last three games of the season. Bruce is back. How good is that? Yeah. Let's go, Bruce. All right, where's he been? That's what yeah, I know. I don't know. Did he retire from football? Do you? We've been begging for him. Bring Matt Healan as well. Bring in the big guns for us. I don't remember. Did he do like a big, I'm not coming back? Kane, like did he retire completely? Uh, Kane's on the bottom of it now. I think yeah. he retired from doing football, went into horse racing. Okay. But they've clearly said, hey, we need a bit of juju here. We need some, some bit of riz. Yeah. <laughs> Come back, Bruce, and spark this thing up because we need someone. Luke Hodge is getting a lot of airtime lately. Hmm. So this Kane just said that he retired in 2020 from all broadcasting, football, obviously, and now he's coming out of retirement and he's going to return Friday night 
for the Sydney Port game. He's done a Dusty. Dusty Martin. He's rediscovered his Come back. Passion. Love that. We're supposed to go to the Gold Coast for a bit. Yeah. Living up there. So I like it here. We love Bruce. One of the all timers. Literally the GOAT. Yeah, yeah, I reckon. Oh, Cometti's my GOAT, but yeah, I'd agree. Two horse race. Yeah, true. It's those two daylight, then yeah. Matt Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Please, AFL, if you're listening to us, bring those three into one box and let us just. Ah. Uh, yeah. Ah. Ah. Hey, let's get into it because a shitload of stuff happened actually on the football field because it was week two of finals and absolute carnage. I loved it. What a week of football. If this doesn't make you feel, if this doesn't get blood going to the right places, then mm-hmm. go see your doctor because you might be dead. Mm. Hard all weekend. Unreal. <laughs> two games of football. Friday night, Powers, Power v. the Hawks. And this is crazy coming out of this. Three-point winners were, were the Port Power. Every final they've played in has been decided by exactly three points. What? Every final they've played. Is crazy. Now they've only played three of them, <laughs> but but to be oh my god, three games, th- three games, and every final is a three point win wow. to one of the teams. Back against the wall, Ken and the boys from Port Adelaide. We wrote them off completely. Everyone did against the backs against the wall, the hottest team in the league. They're up against the Hawk, and they come out and just dominate. Yeah, absolute underdogs. Backs completely. They had no right winning this thing. No, no right. Like even what they dished up last week, all the noise around Ken and you know Butters being called soft out there by someone else, not us. We had we literally had Ken sacked, and this son of a bitch won't go down. He keeps coming back for more, like Terminator Ken, and loves it. The amount of fist pumping, celebrating, yelling after the game was very Ken like. He is Kanaf for me. Oh yeah, he's Kanaf, and all the rumors still about him maybe getting sacked next year. I'm saying if I'm outside looking in and giving advice, if I was brought in for being an advisor, I'm saying you keep Ken Hingley. So you've done the He's a great coach. On yeah, I've switched. So He's wh- such a good coach. What was it in particular? Uh, well, the players obviously play for him. Yep. That's massive to get your players to play for you. He's just, he keeps taking him to finals and putting him in the best position. At some point, it has to be back on the players. A coach who does that over and over again, we're seeing with the West Coast job, a different scenario, but you know, no one, there's no one put their hand up for that job. Now, it might be because there's, you know, it's West Coast, but it might be because there's just not many great coaches out there in the league, mm. in the landscape. You've got a really good one at the moment who the players love. So I hope that they don't sack him. Mm. The feeling is, though, he has to win a premiership to to keep his job. I mean, to be fair, that's what we and the public are saying. Mm. I don't know if that's necessarily the... Behind the, closed doors yeah. saying something different. I don't know. It's I a prelim bloody brings. good. It's great. <laughs> Only four four teams can get there. Unbelievable. So you the know. board are going to make a decision now if he does bow this weekend. Do we still keep him around for another year? Which I think he's contracted for another year. Yeah. I'd be I'd be keeping him, but I love what they did. And we should be speaking about this game in, in a light where we speak about how what a great win it was in the history of the football club. Backs against the walls, we said, shouldn't have won, had no right to win. Ken, question marks all over him. But now we're going to talk about it as everything that happened off the field. Ginevan had opportunities in the game to to win. Sicily had opportunities to win late, but most of this game was played off the field. Mm. Guinea during the week just barking, see you in 14 days to Ken and the boys, trying to completely bypass Paul Adelaide. And then after the game, Ken wins fist pumping up and about. We found out that Ken used that as fuel after the game. He's fist pumping, jumping around, hugging, and then starts mouthing off. (laughs) <laughs> Guinea and the boys as they're doing a guard of honour. Yeah, that's not on. It was, and then, so they're doing that and then Sicily gets wind of this. He comes from the back, starts going back at Ken, shaking his head. Ken's still going at him. The best person or the best, you know, position person who come out, you know, looking amazing in this was Radical Oh, totally. Told Ken, hey, you're out of pocket here. <laughs> that's enough. Told him to calm down and you just know as soon as Ken said it, on, in his face, in the guard of honour, he knew he'd fucked up. Oh, yeah. Straight away. But just wild. And everyone's, you know, I, everyone's arguing about was it a good thing, was it a bad thing. Let the boys play. Mm. This is finals footy. Put the whistles away, let the boys play. They're all grown men out there. Yeah. Let them handle their business, Yeah, I reckon. I would have loved to have seen it straight after the national anthem. Right at the start. Oh, I set the tone. Like gone. Would that have been different then? Yeah, I think you so. You Because I feel like like you've you've now won. You're through. Like just walk off. Like you've said, yeah, we've done the job now, you know? I didn't hate it. You know what? I think it's good for football. I think it's good for everyone who was engaged. I think we all watched the game. Yeah. We all did. And that story, we're all gonna watch their next game next year. What a great thing for football. That's true. I loved it so much. We need more of it. We don't need to put muzzles on people. Take the muzzles off. 
Let them go at each other. They fined him twenty thousand dollars. Now is the club playing that one? Do you reckon? hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. They are definitely. There's no way that he's going to pay for that at all. I do think what happened though is now we're talking about Ken's job. I feel like. So he's kept his job with a win. Yeah. He's potentially 50-50 won his job. And then 10 seconds later starts yapping and loses his job because the board will go, oh, that's not us. That's yeah. not poor out. We're not, that's not what poor out people do. We don't have teeth. And now you're, you're running your mouth like that? Yeah. So that's the only thing. Um, Ken post game, I think with Roman Bryan said, oh, yeah, that wasn't good by me. That yeah. was really bad. Then when in the press, that was bad for me. Sam Mitchell said he, said he found it disrespectful. James yeah. Sisley then also said, you know, the, I don't like that at all. We found it disrespectful. A six-year-old going a 20-year-old. The AFL asked for a please explain. And Ken said, there's literally not much to explain. What you saw is what it is. Yeah. Just, he was looking for a fight all night, the big boy. I mean, to be fair, also, he did it against the only team in the league that run their mouth. So it's a little bit like... Talk the talk, walk the walk. Yeah. You gotta, I think you have to. Yeah. And we love what the Hawk have bought all year. We love yeah. that been yapping. We've been praising him. So we, have, we kind of have to sit in a position where we like Ken and Power talking as well. Yeah. And, and yeah, as, you know, the argument was, yeah, it's a 60 year old who should know better and he's a face of football club against a 20 year old who didn't really direct at him. But it's all part of it. Yeah. It's all intertwined and just let him get it on. Yeah. I loved it. More of that, please. More personalities. Don't find him. Just let him go. Yeah. Slap on the wrist. Let him go. But he was, as I said, he was looking for a fight all night, half time. He had a subtle dig at Kane when they asked about Zach Butters. He said, yeah, pretty tough, isn't he? So he was, he, he was up. He had his back up all night. Oh, Ken. yeah. And I get it. The amount of shit we've given him. For him to maybe just be excited, bit hard, <laughs> run his mouth. Totally. I loved it. Good on him. So give us more of that, please. Um, poor Brody Grundy just caught in the middle of it all. Just minding his own business, posting a photo with Isaac Heaney, caught in the crosshairs. <laughs> so good. And he said, came out and said, yeah, I saw the comment. I didn't want to engage with that because I'm a bit older. I know how this thing works. Yeah. So Guinea's just, apparently Guinea said to the leadership group during the week that I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry I did that. Guinea, keep being you. Yeah. Don't listen to him. Don't you, feel guilty now. Double you know, down. I'm waiting for next season when we've got the fixture released. Yeah. Oh, when, yeah. Whenever we see Sydney versus Hawthorne, I want Brody Grundy to comment on Ginevan's post and say, see you in <laughs> yeah. See you in 79 days. Love that. That'd be so good. Yeah. I can't wait. That first game also between Power and Hawks, that's going to be great. Yeah. That is fine. That's going to be – there's genuine, genuine hate now yeah. between those two teams. Um, but the, the, I mean, on the game, Port were just unbelievable. Jace Burgoyne is a stud. Yeah, 25 kid. touches and a goal, and he was everywhere. The yep. Burgoynes and Riolis, they're built for the big stage. Yep. They are – that's what they want to play for. They don't care about the regular season. When the big stage is there and it's set up and the lights are bright, that's when they step up. Both of those players were unbelievable. Willie had 15 and two goals. Um, Willie Rioli, like, Willie made uh, – he made my Willie go do Riolis. Sean mm. Sweet doesn't give a shit about anything. He is a big son of a bitch. 52 hitouts and 15 touches. Took on Meek Mill and just dominated him. We thought Meek was the informed ruckman league. It's hard to do. Sean yeah. Sweet is a big boy. Yeah. Big tree trunk legs. Mitch Georgiatis, serious player as well. And all the magic for the Hawk just ran out. Just ran out of steam. Everyone, the bandwagon, I think it's it's a lot of energy to be everyone's team. Mm. Consuming. A lot to handle. And they just ran out. They gave us a great season. Thanks, Hawk. Yeah, honestly, thank you. Thank you, Hawk. You made this year great. Yeah. You shouldn't have been there. You should. It's just a fairy tale. We all got behind you. Now, I think next year will be different because now you're dangerous. Yeah. So we jump off the bandwagon. Oh, oh yeah. We're against you now. Yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we don't lean into that at all. This is war now. You're no. going to go out and get Barass and battle. It's war. Just became – I think this is – their year has set them up completely for, for next season, oh, what they're totally. going to do. They're going to assault the league next year. Talk about a destination club. They're going to beat oh. the shit out of every team next year. Bringing those two players in, your young players got experience. They got finals experience. They got a year of chemistry. Sam Mitchell won all their respect, gave them a new game plan. They went out and executed perfectly. Young team, mm -hmm. full of momentum, energy, believe they can do it. We're all cooked. Yeah. We're all cooked That's next it. year. They are just going to just be something different next year. And now Port survive underdogs again. I think they love being the underdog. They love when their backs are against the wall and they have all, you know, no expectation of them to win. The players love it clearly because they did what they did on the weekend. And they go up against a team that hasn't beat them since 2016. And they beat them by 20 goals a few months ago. Big game. Sydney will go in favourites for sure, but that's that's not as simple as you think. No, I don't think it is no, either. That's not a, that's not a Errol Gordon posting the AFLC on seven days <laughs> to the MCG. No. I would love if one of the Sydney boys did that. 
just comment on the on, MCG post. Yeah, on the official MCG. <laughs> See you in 14 Instagram. days. <laughs> that would be unbelievable. <laughs> so when I'm Port, great win. A great win. Yeah. And oh, they're all back on him after a week of just living in hell for Ken. Yeah. Great. I, I loved it. So what well on Ken and the boys. And then we moved to the miracle at that shit old NG Stadium. Absolute chopsticks to the eyes viewing this was. Aesthetically on the TV looked just gross. Lots of empty seats out there. Way more than I thought, which is, you know. A lot more empty seats. Yeah. Yeah. Sydney don't give a shit about going to NG Stadium. No. Nah. They love the SCG, but they're not going out to a showground for livestock. I just felt like maybe the Giants would have thrown a few more corporates out there. Just a little bit like, let's get this thing full. A lot of empty seats. Yeah. yeah aesthetically on the TV looked really just gross. The Lion Strip maybe as well did it for me initially. Yeah. I was like, what are you guys Very doing yellow. there? So that was the first thing for me, but we witnessed one of the all-time greatest comebacks in finals history. Lions fans probably turn the TV off at three-quarter time. Fair enough. So we've had enough of this. I think that what happens here is there is a point in every fan season, no matter who you go for, that you go from, you know, it's going to be a good season, believing in your season, getting to finals, and then there's like a half of football where you go, okay, this thing's over. I'm in list management mode. Sure. Who <laughs> are we delisting right now? Yeah. The Lions were truly in that. They were dead and they had no right winning this game at all and come back to life and shock the football world. 80 to 36 it was the third quarter. 44 points down and win by five points. Now, I was just sitting there innocently with a red wine, minding my own damn business when the Brisbane banner went up and my phone started lighting up. What did I do to cop an absolute stray from the Lions? On the banner, it read, last week we eliminated Daniel Gorringe. This week it'll be the orange. Doesn't even rhyme. No. And I copped a stray. What did I do? I mean, you can write that AFLW connection right off. Yeah. Now. Ju- yeah, oh yeah, we're done. Like. You come for me? Yeah. You come for the ball? Get ready to get the horns. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not this, you didn't get it in the week, but I'm ready to go. Yeah, but yeah. I dare you to lose. <laughs> I'll make my own banner. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say this. Uh, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to workshop. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to workshop my own banner yeah, when they lose. Done. And we'll bring it up. We'll erect it here. Yeah. Erect. Run through that. Yeah, we will. So I didn't know what I deserve that. I actually kind of liked it. Now I lent into it. It was pretty cool. It was I mean, very it was cool. Pretty, it was very it's cool. It's a bit of an honour. It was, uh, it's, yeah, I did feel very blessed. It was good to be part of the win in some way. Yeah, you know, sure. As part of the banner and getting astray. But it was good to be connected. Mm. In the, I think the boys, when they ran through it as well, you could see a little twinkle in their eye going, okay, let's go after Dan Gorringe. You know, it, Port had Guinea and the 14 days thing. Port had Daniel Gorringe and let's get rid of Orange. And I totally get it. So you're welcome, guys. But this win was done in a very unlike Brisbane way. So they normally start quick as shit and then die in the ass. This time they did the Uno reverse. Mm. Started off okay and then just caught fire. They were just couldn't miss late. Joe Danaher kicks one from literally the car park of the showgrounds. Then he kicks another one to seal the game. And then before that, 14 minutes to go, Brent Daniels plays on. Toby Green gets a free kick at the top of the square. Brent Daniels just loses his mind. He plays on. He's off the ground. Soccer's it misses. And that would have put them five goals up with 14 minutes to go. Mm-hmm. Probably would have done it. Yeah. Just, that'll haunt him for a little while. Poor Brent Poor Daniels. Bugger. Played so before that. As we said, just the blinds just got hot when it needed. And if Brisbane Hines, all year have been laughing at them saying, oh, it's so funny how they keep missing. Caught fire and did not miss. And that was just... One of the all-time games I've seen. Yeah. I loved it. And for the second week in a row, the Giants take some Metamucil and shit the bed at oh, three-quarter time. Confirmed. They've got some demons there. Yeah. There's some real shaky things there. I felt so – I mean, I didn't feel bad for them, but that's just – there's nothing they could do. No. Once momentum changed, it was all – they were all out of sea. Unbelievable scenes. They have a long preseason thing about that. And it – yeah, that, that's going to be some demons that will haunt them for mm-hmm. a long time. A You're long, just got to make sure that that doesn't become their DNA. You know, what they're known for. Yeah. That's what they're going to do now. I know. So Adam Kingsley after the game, really flat. You just know would have sprayed him after it. Just sprayed him. So Giants out again. Big chokes. Big chokes. Yeah. They're done. So they're done. Now we got uh, Giants. No, Sydney. Yeah, Brisbane at the G against the Cats. The Cats. Yep. Big, big game. Sydney Port Friday. 5-15 game for the uh, Brisbane and Cats. And also we'll obviously preview it uh on Thursdays, yeah, but I don't reckon that one's straightforward either. I've put it in the system, in my own, my own system. Are you I've spat out announcing a, now? No, I'll probably leave it. Okay. I'll listen to Thursdays. That's yet. a good call. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great. Okay, well, guys, that was just big. 
A lot happening around the league. We've got a big week of football coming up. We will try and, uh, you know, get to the bottom of Max or Ben. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, if one of them wants to come forward and admit who it was, that'd be really if anyone nice. saw it at the London yeah. and wants to come forward and say they saw it, yeah. let us know. I'd appreciate that. But other than that, we will see you as we go into another huge week of finals football on Thursday. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.